Today I'd like to chat about meal planning because when someone asks me for help with their nutrition, at least half of the time what they're truly asking me for is for a vegan meal plan. But the thing is, I'm not a huge fan of meal plans, or at least not meal plans in the traditional sense of the term. So instead of providing you with a meal plan that has a specific calorie goal for the day or provides you with the recipes that you should follow or a specific list of foods to avoid or even a meal plan that lays out precisely what to eat at which time of the day, I'd like to take a slightly different approach to things. So in this video, I will share the vegan meal planner and step-by-step -step approach that I use to plan my family's vegan meals for the week. Since I get this question very often, I want to take a moment to address why I'm not a huge fan of traditional meal plans. And there are three main reasons for this. The first is that the type and amount of recipes that many require you to prepare end up suggesting that I should spend a lot more time in the kitchen than I currently am willing to as a busy mom. And I would like to spend that extra time doing more fun things like taking my kid to the park or even filming these kind of videos. The second reason is that many are built on a framework that suggests that certain foods are good and that others are bad. Or they even provide a certain calorie target that you should meet each day. And I don't find that this is a very conducive method to developing a healthy and positive relationship with food or maintaining such a relationship. And it definitely doesn't go hand in hand with a more intuitive approach to eating that I prefer to help people develop. And finally, the act of designing a meal plan for someone else ups the likelihood that they'll require my help for the next meal plan and the meal plan after that and the meal plan after that one, which I just don't find a very sustainable way of proceeding. Now I realize that some people prefer to outsource this task and that's perfectly fine and if this is the case for you, I'm sure you can find loads of people on the internet willing to help you with this task. It's just not the type of work that I prefer doing and it doesn't really fit in with the way that I view nutrition. So instead of providing you with a meal plan each week, I prefer to show you how to build your own vegan meal plan based on your particular needs and on the foods that you and your family actually enjoy eating. So that said, let's get into the step-by-step -step process that I follow when planning my family's vegan meals for the week. Here's what you'll need. A piece of paper, pen, and whiteout, or alternatively an Excel or number sheet open on your computer, a few of your favorite vegan recipe books, or access to the internet so you can easily find some recipes, and a separate sheet of paper or a document to create your grocery list. The next step is to figure out how many homemade meals you'll need for the week. Now, the amount can vary from person to person and depends on things like your lifestyle or your preferences or your schedule or many other factors. So here's an example of mine so you can take a look and have an idea of what this may look like for you. Our family eats mostly at home because both of us like to cook and we have a small child, but we also sometimes just don't feel like cooking, which is why we opt to plan for five home cooked meals per week and reserve two cooking free days, one with leftovers midweek and another on the weekend for takeout or the odd restaurant meal. Many of our lunches are leftovers from the previous night's dinner, and now that we have moved and actually have a decent sized fridge and freezer, I very often make extra so we can add to our freezer stash of leftover meals. Now if you've seen the size of my tiny fridge and freezer from previous videos, you'll know why this was not possible up to now. So I'm so very excited that I can start doing this again. Most weeknight meals will be quick, family favorites that I can cook mostly without looking at any recipe, but I have reserved Saturdays for trying out a lengthy, perhaps more intricate meal from a recipe book so I can discover new meals that can eventually be incorporated into our weekly rotation. I also find that actually specifying what kind of recipe I would like to be planning for each day of the week makes it easier to come up with meal ideas when it comes time to actually fill the vegan meal planner, which is the next step of this process. I personally do all my planning on the computer using a simple meal planning template I've created. I find this easier as I can type and delete as needed without having to use copious amounts of whiteout. So I start with a few guidelines that help ensure that my meals meet my and my family's nutrition needs and I'll put a link to the article where you can find these guidelines down below. And from the guidelines, I create a color-coded list of food categories to include in my meal planner and I distribute them accordingly to what works best for me. For example, I like to have fruit with breakfast and with snacks, so I go ahead and distribute them this way. In this week's plan, I was also paying special attention to calcium-rich foods because I noticed that it's one of the food categories that we sometimes fail to consistently include in our diet. So that's why I've put all of the calcium-rich foods in capital letters for this meal plan. You can do this for whatever nutrient you wish, and if you need a list of plant-based sources of these nutrients, I've made free copies available on the Veggies and More website, which you can find the link to down below. 
Like I mentioned before, I like to reuse leftovers and that's why you'll often see a dinner repeated as the next day's lunch. And I also sometimes batch make snacks like smoothies so I can have them over two different days. Some people find it very boring to eat leftovers for lunch, but I never had a problem with it. I quite like it actually. And I'm wondering if you do this too. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Now, once you've planned all of your meals and snacks, it's time to fill your grocery list. And I like to split mine by categories, which makes it quicker to find and shop for these items when I actually go to the grocery store. And then once you have all of your ingredients in house, all there's left to do is print your handy dandy meal plan for the week, place it somewhere visible, like in your kitchen, for example, and you're set for the week. If you'd like to get your hands on a copy of the template that I personally use when planning my meals, I'll put a link for you down below. Or you can just choose to use pen and paper, whatever works best for you. Now I realize it's perhaps a bit of a different way of planning meals that you may not be accustomed to, so I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. I don't necessarily use this method when planning my meals each week. Sometimes I do decide to completely forgo it and just wing it. <laughs> but I have noticed that whenever I do take the time to plan my meals in this way, we end up eating a more varied diet, we produce a lot less food waste, and also we end up saving quite a lot of money on groceries, which I didn't expect that it would make that big of a difference. So perhaps those are all incentives that I should use to do it in this way more often. That's all I got for today. I hope that you got something useful out of this meal planning video, even if it wasn't necessarily what you expected. And with that said, until next time, ciao ciao!